Almost every star you can see in the night sky with your eyes alone is bigger and more luminous than the sun. That's just a selection effect. From a great distance, the biggest and brightest in any collection of things will be the ones that stand out. But the fact remains that the sun is just a run-of-the-mill star, one among many billions of stars of every type in our galaxy. It only seems impressive because we're on its doorstep. Over time, the sun is getting brighter. It's about 30% brighter now than it was when it first started to shine 5 billion years ago. Like all stars during most of its lifetime, it makes light and heat by fusing hydrogen into helium in its core. As the helium ashes build up, being more massive than hydrogen, they raise the density of the core, causing it to burn hotter and the sun to shine brighter. Eventually, all the hydrogen in the core will be used up and gravity, no longer balanced by the outward force of radiation pressure, will squeeze the core smaller, elevating its temperature still more. The extra heat at the center will ignite hydrogen in a shell surrounding the core and the sun will enter its twilight years. As the inert helium core grows, so will the hydrogen burning shell above it. The sun's luminosity will rise faster along with the rate at which helium is dumped onto the core. In less than 5 billion years time, the sun will be another two-thirds brighter than it is now and then it will start to swell, even as it becomes yet more luminous. By about 11 billion AD, the sun will be unrecognizable with 1,000 times its present-day luminosity and a crimson-hued surface that has ballooned out monstrously beyond the orbits of Mercury and Venus. The sun will have been transformed into a red giant. One factor above all others dictates what a star is like and how it will evolve, its mass. At the low end, some stars weigh only about a tenth as much as the Sun. Throughout their long lives, which may run into trillions of years, much longer than the present age of the universe, they eke out their fusion energy reserves very slowly and remain small and cool. Red dwarfs are the commonest type of star in space. 20 of the 30 nearest stars to Earth are of this type. On the other hand, stars more massive than the Sun live shorter, more spectacular lives. The brightest star in the night sky is Sirius, 8.7 light years away, with double the Sun's mass, 1.7 times its diameter, and 25 times its luminosity. Its lifetime as a core hydrogen burning main sequence star will be only about a billion years, less than a tenth that of the Sun. Over in the constellation Orion are stars on view to the unaided eye which up close would appear awesome in both size and brilliance. Blue-white Rigel manages to be the seventh brightest star in the night sky even though it lies at least 860 light years away. It's classified as a blue supergiant, a massive, very luminous star with a high surface temperature that's only recently stopped fusing hydrogen in its core. Rigel is about 20 times as massive as the Sun, with 80 times its diameter and about 120,000 times its luminosity. Orion is also home to the orange-red star Betelgeuse, or if you prefer Betelgeuse, another supergiant but with a much cooler, vastly more expansive surface. Betelgeuse is a red supergiant, so large that if it were put in place of the Sun, its surface would reach out to between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Like all supergiants, whether red, blue, white or yellow, Betelgeuse hasn't long to live in cosmic terms. Probably within the next 100,000 years or so, it will explode as a supernova, leaving behind a collapsed core in the form of a neutron star or black hole. Betelgeuse is huge by solar standards, but it's by no means the largest star known. The biggest that can be seen without binoculars or a telescope is Mu Cephei, also known as the Garnet Star because its deep red hue resembles that of the gemstone. There's some uncertainty about its distance and therefore of its size and brightness, but it's definitely bigger than Betelgeuse and would reach out beyond Jupiter's orbit if it replaced the Sun. 
Close to the top of the stellar size league is UY Scooty, an immense star that lies between 9,000 and 10,000 light years from Earth. It's described as either an extreme red supergiant or a red hypergiant and has a diameter about 1,700 times that of the Sun. Five billion suns could be crammed inside its stupendous bulk. In fact, UY Scuti is so large that it exceeds the theoretical size limit for stars around 1,500 solar diameters conventionally accepted by astronomers. There's an ongoing debate about how the biggest known stars formed in the first place and how they remain stable for most of their brief lives. In the number one slot based on size is a star known as Stevenson 218, abbreviated to ST218, which lies on the outskirts of a cluster of stars 19,000 light years away. Its diameter is estimated to be 2,150 times that of the Sun, or 20 times the Earth-Sun distance. A ray of light travelling at 300,000 kilometres per second would take nearly nine hours to go around its surface compared to 14 and a half seconds for the Sun. If placed at the centre of the solar system, the surface of ST-218 would engulf the orbit of Saturn. Stevenson 218 is also extreme in another way. It's fantastically bright, as luminous as a third of a million suns. Stars can appear bright in the night sky because they're relatively nearby. The third brightest after Sirius and Canopus is Alpha Centauri, actually a three-star system, which is less than three and a half light years away. But the most luminous of stars in absolute terms are those which radiate prodigious amounts of light from their surfaces. Among stars that can be seen with the naked eye, the intrinsically most luminous is probably Zeta-1 Aurigae, a white hypergiant that dwells within a young cluster of hot bright stars known as the Scorpius OB-1 Association. It shines as brightly as 850,000 suns. Further up the League of Stellar Brilliance are a number of members of the Arches Cluster, the densest known star cluster in our galaxy, located about 100 light years from the center of the Milky Way and 25,000 light years from Earth. The most prominent inhabitants of the Arches are 13 so-called Wolf Rayet stars and 8 O-type hypergiants. Both these types of stars are extremely hot and massive and dominate the top positions in our Luminosity League. Currently occupying first position is R136A1, which lies in the Tarantula Nebula, a vast region of hot gas and young stars situated within a satellite galaxy of ours, the Large Magellanic Cloud. R136A1 is a wolf rayet star with 7 million times the luminosity of the Sun. It's also one of the heaviest known stars, at 222 solar masses. The brightest known stars, including the one I've just mentioned, are also among the most massive. All are close to or more than 200 times as heavy as the Sun. It's possible that in the very early days of the universe, shortly after the first stars formed, that some stellar behemoths were even heavier. Among the so-called Population 3 of the Dawn Cosmos, there were perhaps stars weighing up to several hundred or even 1,000 solar masses and with corresponding colossal luminosities. No such stars have yet been observed, but there is some indirect evidence for them, and with a new generation of very powerful telescopes coming on stream, it may not be long before we catch our first glimpse of these extreme superstars. <laughs>